Everywhere you go, tell it. How do I love you? Thank you, children, for that so much. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, <clears throat> on this day, we come before thee thanking you and praising you for all and everything which thou hast done, doing plans to do. We thank you for thinking enough of us that you have granted us the opportunity to once again to be alive and well, enter into your court, and then do so with praise. We thank you, our Father, for this Memorial Day weekend where we remember the warriors of yesteryears. Those that have passed on, fought the battles, that we might be free. We thank you, Father, for he whom you sent battling with the one who once was in heaven. But because of thine will, he rose himself up and was thrown out. And we learn that he has had great wrath against the children who desire to be where he once was. Father, he has fought a many a battle. Some he has won, others he has lost. But the greatest loss came at the hands of thine only begotten Son, who died that we might have life and then have it more abundantly. Father, we can live in this world of today and still not be free. But Jesus paid the price that we might be free once and for all. Because sin does bind, but Jesus set us free. We are free to serve thee in the beauty of holiness all because of the battle that he won. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And Father, he conquered it all, and today is seated at thine right hand, interceding for us all. So we thank you. For those men and women on the battlefield that have fought and lost their lives, for the freedom that we enjoy here on earth, we thank you, asking that you remember those that's on the battlefield still fighting for the freedom of others. Remember your children, Israel, struggling with an old enemy, failing to do what you have commanded them to do has caused them to be as they are today. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and turn, you say, from their wicked ways that you will, and seek my face. You say you then will hear from heaven and heal their land. Remember those that are sick, afflicted, the fever-minded, the blind, them that are less fortunate we are. Those in the convalescent homes, 
and those caretakers that are watching over those who cannot care for themselves. Remember those in the jailhouses for failing to heed to the law of the land. Some are there worthy to be, others are not. Thou knowest. So we pray, dear Lord, that you will look down upon America as a whole because it is shifted away from thee that you will open the eyes of the blind. That it may come to the realization of the truth that God is. And they that worship you must do so in spirit and in truth. So Father, we want to say thank you for your loving hours of protection around about us, shielding us from all that harm and danger and the sins of the world. We thank you for protecting Olita Coach Lines. Day in and day out, up and down the road, here and there. Remember the Benjamin family, dear Lord, that's, that suffered the loss of their beloved one, Felicia, who died suddenly, who was supposedly to be behind the wheel of the bus. But you saw fit, no, not now. And we thank you. Be with the family, dear Lord, as they grieve the loss of that loved one. Comfort them and strengthen them. May they know that God cares. And so do we. So Father, open unto us now the windows of heaven. And pour us out a blessing. That we may have what is necessarily needed in order to impart unto others the ways that are pleasing and acceptable in our sight. Causing us to shine as lights in the world. In the midst of all of this darkness that they may see the light of Christ in us. Reach out that they likewise might be saved. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. We do pray and for his sake. We thank you. Together can we all say amen. Give an honor to God today and to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to the ministers of the gospel, the deacons, the congregation, and those that are tuning in. We say good afternoon and may God bless you. For God is good and his mercy endureth to all generation. We thank God for the principles, the teachings, the doctrines of Christ. Thank God for the scroll which reads obedience, love, reverence, and respect, first being to God, then to leadership, and then to one another. Thank God for the principles and the teachings and the doctrines of Christ that have been implicated unto us. And our aim and object is to carry on. Thank God for this, the 26th day of May. Amen. May just got here and May is just about gone. But we thank God for taking us through thus far. Sparks from the Anvil on page three of your programs today. The first one says, in church, we're going to set you straight for heaven or hell. Amen. The wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Our Lord, the church of God's purpose is to be a light to the world. That they may be able to see who they are and where they are 
where salvation is concerned. So any church that failed to do this is not God's church, but man's church. If you believe in gayism, there's a church for you. If you can believe that a man can have two or three wives, there's a church for you. But if you want to live godly in Christ Jesus, this is the church for you. God's church is going to set you straight for either heaven or hell. The second says, at the house of God, you can find out how you stand and where you stand. And then what you need to do to stand in this evil day at the house of God. Because when the gospel is preached, the songs are being sung, the word of God is being read, you learn where you stand. And it's one thing as of a certainty, you know within yourself who you are. And God knows who you are. And this is why sometimes when the, world, the gospel is being preached, you be looking all funny, squirming in your seat, closing your eyes, manifestation that's in God's house. The third says the Lord has only one church. Glad to have the Church of God from Kenya being represented today. Isn't that something? We saw the sign, the Church of God, all the way from Kenya, who's been in the news this week, because your president has been in at the White House. <clears throat> God has people all around the world. As the elder says, they are just like us. The Spirit of God moves. Some have a greater knowledge, but they live what they live according to what they know and understand. So the Lord has only one church, <clears throat> and I've watched this before. You see, the church of God is the only church that is purchased with the blood of Christ. Can you say your church? So, and remember it says, God has only one church. All the rest belong to the devil. So you need to check. Examine. I, I've, I've shared this with you all. I challenge you to ask your pastor, do you have the Holy Ghost? Because, see, the Holy Ghost is the teacher. And if your pastor starts squirming, looking all up and asking, why are you asking me that question? Then just be assured that your pastor is working for the devil. Because when he has the Holy Ghost, you won't have to ask him, you'll see it. In his walk, in his talk, in his everyday existence. You cannot hide the Spirit of God. It manifests itself. Amen? So the Lord has only one church. And guess what? The rest belong to the devil. Where are you? 
Amen. Where are you sitting today? In God's church or the other? Good question. And on the back of the program, it says, in remembering the various ones who gave their lives for our freedom here on earth, and this is what Memorial Day is all about, memorizing those that have fought the battles for freedom. May we never forget Jesus Christ who gave his life on the cross one day that we might be freed from the pits of hell. And then, yes, live eternally with him where? In glory. So, yes, we remember the brave humans, but Jesus secured for us, watch this now, what? Eternal life. No other man did that. No other woman did that. There's not but one that was able to secure eternal life for us, and that was Jesus. Song said he paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. He washed his white and so. I said, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain, but he is white and snow. Isn't that wonderful? Jesus paid it all. <laughs> Amen. So there's no other individual, man or woman, that's fighting the battle, fought the battle, that have secured eternal life for us but Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Give God <laughs> and then on the front of your program, it says, remembering today the cost of freedom. Remembering today. We can never forget those that have fought, labored on the battlefields, on the waterways, in the air, all around the world, freedom. We have the freedom here today to walk the streets, to live where we so desire to live, to purchase what we so desire to purchase according to what we have in our pockets. Many do not have that freedom. We have the freedom to have children as many as we so desire to have. Many don't have that freedom. Oh yeah, there's countries that forbid you to go over to. I'd been locked up. <laughs> Amen, I'd have been locked up. <clears throat> But thank God for the freedom to let God so be willing. Let God's will so be. Amen. You want to try to put a stop to God's will. But I must tell you, you're going to lose that battle. <clears throat> God's will will be done. Amen. So truly, we thank God indeed for all things great and small. Thank God for the power of God, which is under salvation to all that believe. I thank God for saving me one day and for giving me the mind, the desire, and the determination to press onward. 
leaning and depending on Jesus each and every step of the way. Why? Because without him, I would be nothing. Had it not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? He's kept my enemies away. He turned my darkness into a bright, sunshiny day. He holds my hand, and then he helps me to understand. If it were not for him, my soul would be lost. So truly, I thank God for the man and the woman of God of the life of Solomon Mishaw and his companion, two beautiful people whom God fixed up with his word one day, sent him into the world, and they preached and taught the gospel that men, women, boys, and girls should live a life free from sin. <clears throat> thank God for the thought for the day. And it is one unsung hero. One unsung hero. Amen. There are many heroes that have done great things. But today I want to talk to you about one unsung hero. The word one is a noteworthy example. One means a noteworthy example of who are or what is. In this sense, who are, an example of who you are or what you're supposed to be. Amen. Unsung is defined as someone who is not noticed, celebrated, or praised for a work. Amen. Being brave or achieving an unthinkable result. That's unsung. Hero is defined as a person who is admired or idealized for courage. Amen. Courage. Outstanding achievements or have noble qualities. How are we doing, church? Amen. Dean Keith is out, so as we tend to lean on Brother Brian Jr. Amen. He's coming along, learning the ropes. So you train them. You train them in the way that they should go. Not the way that they want to go, but the way that they should go. That when they become of age, then they won't depart. So congregation, <clears throat> if you turn with me to the book of Esther, the sixth chapter, we learn the story of Esther and how that <clears throat> she became queen because of Another who refused to give honor where honor was due. Follow me? Or did I lose you? She failed to do honor where honor is required. 
And so because of that, it was given unto another to take her place that, watch it, was better than she. And that happened to be Esther. Well, you see, everything is foreknown. See, God knows it all, and he got everything in place. And so the enemy of the children of Israel had convinced the king to wipe these people out. Just like what Hamas want to do today from one end of the earth to the next, they want to annihilate Israel. Church, that's not going to happen. Amen. That's not going to happen. But that's not stopping them from believing. That's man. Satan will pump you up and make you believe one thing when it's totally something different. That's the adversary. And so the queen, Esther, was approached by Mordecai, and Mordecai had told her, you've you come to the kingdom for this purpose. Who's to say? Well, I can't go into the king without being called. And he told her, you're not going to escape. Because they're going to find out that you are a Jew just like everybody else. And this order that has been sent down by this wicked man, Haman, whose aim and object, interesting, Haman, Hamas, Haman. Isn't that something? Who had purposely designed a system to clean out all the Jews. The same old devil playing the same old trick just on new people. And so we find that Esther went before the king. And he asked, what did she desire? And she called for a gathering. And I want you to make sure that Haman is present. Amen. And so the story went on. And in the sixth chapter, after the king had done what he had done and set things up, the sixth chapter, beginning at the very first verse, it says what? On that night, could not the king what? Sleep. How many of you all lay there and can't go to sleep? Because something is on your mind. Amen. Something is on your, that's weighing on the mind. And you toss and you turn. Sleep has left you because of the circumstances that exist. And he could not sleep, and he commanded to bring the book of the records of the Chronicles, and they were read before the king. It's interesting how he reached out for the Chronicles. These are records of events that happened. You see, church, in order to get the mystery, you have to know the history. Why is it that I cannot sleep? And they read before the king 
Second verse says, and it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bigathar, the Tiras, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to do what? To lay hand on the king, Esherah. Ash Ahasuerus. Ahasuerus. Oh, yeah. They planned to take the king out. Hmm? Isn't that something? Right within the king's own cabinet, they plan to take him out. Same old devil. Same old tricks. Just on new people. So listen, read. And the king said, what And the honor? king said, What honor and dignity have been done to Mordecai? The sermon today, the thought. One unsung hero. So what dignity has been done to Mordecai? Read. For this. For this. Read. Then said the king's servants. And the king's servants said what? That ministered unto him. There's nothing done for him. There's nothing done for him. One unsung hero. Hero is a person who is admired or idolized for courage, outstanding achievements, or noble qualities. What's been done? Nothing. Watch this, read. And the king said, who is in the court? So who's in the court? Read. Now Haman was... Now Haman. Haman. This is the wicked Haman now, church. The individual that is planning to de wipe out the Jews. And it was Haman in the court. Read. Now Haman was coming to the outward court Read. of the king's house Read. to speak unto the kings to hang Mordecai. To hang Mordecai on a gallow that he what? Had prepared for him. Brother was speaking about judging. Amen. He doesn't prejudge Mordecai to be hung. Huh? He counted Mordecai as being unworthy. So we're going to hang him. He already got an order from the king to destroy all the Jews, but because Mordecai would not give him reverence, church, you got to be careful who you bow to. If you're a child of God, you have no business bowing to anything that is wicked. And Mordecai refused to give him reverence. So he's going to show up and, and going to have Mordecai hung on this gallow. Read. And the king's servant said unto him, And the king's servant said unto him what? Behold, Haman standeth in the court. Haman is in the court, read. And the king said, let him come in. Let him come in. So Haman came in, and the king said unto him, what should be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor? Read. Now Haman thought in his heart, to whom would the king delight to do honor more read. than to myself? Ah. Who does the king going to honor but me. Huh? He judged wrong. All right. Listen, read. And Haman answered the king. And Haman answered the king and said what? For the man whom the king delighteth to honor. The man whom the king delighteth to honor? Let the royal apparel be brought before him which the king uses to wear, and the horse that the king rideth upon, and the crown royal which is set upon his head, and let this apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's what? Most, Most. noble. Isn't that something? Most noble princes, that they may array the man with all whom the king delighteth to honor. Woo! 
Haman laid it out, but he didn't know it was for another. Watch this, read. And bring him on horseback. Bring him on horseback. Through the street of the city. Through the street of the city. And proclaim before him. And declare, proclaim before him what? Thus shall it be done to man. And what? Whom the king delighteth to honor. Whom the king delighteth to honor. Now watch this church. His bubble going to get popped. His bubble going to get popped. He is all thinking of himself. In the 10th verse says, Then the king said to Haman, Make haste and take the apparel and the horse as thou hast said, and do what? Even so to Mordecai the Jew. Ooh. Not only just Mordecai the Ishmaelite, but Mordecai the Jew, whom you have sought to destroy. One unsung hero. Then what? That sitteth at the king's gate. Then what? Let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. Church, an unsung hero. And you know the story. Haman went home. He was so distraught. And when he laid it out to his wife and his friends, he said, if this thing is true, you're not going to withstand against Mordecai. And what happened? Whatever you judge is coming back to you. The gallow that he had built for Haman, I mean, that Haman had built for Mordecai, they hung him on that gallow. Let's shift ahead a bit. St. Luke, 7th chapter. The time of Jesus. He who paid it all. <clears throat> and there was an individual whom desired, he was a Pharisee, desired that Jesus would come to his house to die. Amen. He was a Pharisee. And while there, in the 37th verse, they sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, not only was she in the city, but she was of the city. If you know what I mean. She was not only in the city, but she was of the city. Behold, a woman in the city which was a sinner. When she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ornament. And listen to this, read. And stood at his feet. And stood at his feet. Listen carefully now. Read. Behind him weeping. Behind him weeping. Read. And began to wash his feet with tears. And she began to wash his feet with tears. And what? Read. And, and did not... And did and did wipe them with the tears. And she ears. wiped them. All right, sisters, listen now. And he, she wiped them with the hairs of her head. 
You know, that had to be some tears falling. She was a woman of the street. And listen to this now. And anointed, you know, she, she wiped him with the hairs of her head and she did what? Kissed his feet. Ooh. Can you imagine seeing some woman? Thank God that Jesus wasn't married. Can you imagine? Seeing another woman kissing your husband's feet, wiping him with the hairs of a head. Thank God. He knows what to do. And listen, <clears throat> and anointed them with the ornament. Hmm? Go over to St. Matthew and see this other writing about this <clears throat> in the 26th chapter. Eighth verse. But when his disciples, 26 and 8, St. Matthew, you, you with me? Eighth verse says what? But when his disciples saw it. But. But. When the disciples saw her wiping his feet with the tears from her eyes and the hairs on her head and kissing them and then anointing him with this oil. But his disciples read it. But when his disciples saw it. When they saw this happening, they had what? Indignation. Indignation is righteous anger against what you feel is injustice. Wait a minute. Why is this being done? We're speaking about one unsung hero here now. Read. Saying to what purpose is to this To what waste? purpose? They counted it as a waste, church. See, this alabaster full of this oil was precious. It was precious. And so they counted that as being wasteful. The disciples now, they, they, they're judging, they're judging. They done judged this woman of what she was doing, that this is unworthy. It is not decent, nor is it right to do. God's got a plan. Watch this now, read for this ointment, for this been, ornament, read, might have been sold for much. Might have been sold for much, and what? Given to the poor. Back to Saint Luke, seventh chapter. <clears throat> Here's another's account. 39th verse. Listen to this. 739. Now when the Pharisee which had bidded him saw it, he what? Second chapter or seventh? Seventh. Seventh. Seven. 39. <clears throat> You with me? St. Luke 7, 39. Says what? 
And he spake a parable unto them. Wait a minute, hold tight. Seventh chapter, the 39th verse. Seventh chapter, St. Luke. Thirty-nine. 39th verse. What does it say? 39? Yeah. And he spake a parable unto them? Nope. St. Luke. St. Luke. Seven chapter. Thirty-ninth verse. There we go. All right. Draw swords. One, two. St. Luke. Seventh. Thirty-ninth. Verse. What does it say? Now, die. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you with me now? What does it say? Now, when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it. That is. Now, when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, the disciples saw it, they responded. Now here the Pharisee saw it, and he's responding. Read. He spake within himself. Within himself. He didn't come out like the disciples. See, some people's attitudes is within, it's hidden. Huh? Some people ain't gonna let you know what they're thinking. But see, Jesus, the word of God, is quick. It's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It knows the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So he was spake within himself saying, this man, if what? If he were a prophet. If he was a prophet, would have known who and what manner a woman would eat. This is... This, this is, is that touch of him. She's not only a woman in the city, she's also a woman of the city. Watch this, read. For she is a sinner. She's a what? For she is a sinner. For she is a sinner. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto you. And he said, Master, say on. For the first verse said, There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence, and the other what? The other 50. Read. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell, tell me, therefore. Tell me. Simon, tell me. He forgave them both. Tell me now. Read. Which of them will love him the Which most? Which of the two will love him what? The most. most. Read. Simon answered and said, I suppose that he, to whom, he forgave most. And what? And he that unto him, thou Read. hast rightly judged. Read. And he, turned to, and he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? Seest thou this woman? Read. I entered into thine house. I came in your house, what? Thou gavest me no water. You didn't give me no water for my feet, but what? She hath washed my feet with tears. Tears, and then what? And wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time that I came in have not ceased to do what? Kiss my feet. Whoo. How we doing, sisters? Thank God your husband ain't Jesus. Huh? Read. My head with 
oil. My head, my head now. With all thou didst not anoint, but this woman have anointed my feet with ornament. Read. Wherefore I say unto thee. Wherefore sins, I say unto thee what? Her sins. Which are what? Which are many. Are what? Are forgiven. For what? She loved much. Loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, guess what? The same loveth little. Same thing today. You find people that's been through an awful lot quickly accepts salvation. But those that's skimming, hey amen, you hear what I said? Those that's skimming, they feel as though they don't need salvation. They ain't interested. They play church. Some people are real serious about church. Others play church. So listen, turn with me to the book of St. Mark. Let's see what St. Mark had to say here. 14th chapter. Draw swords. St. Mark. 14. Six. They all coming down on this woman. But listen to this. Six verse says what? And Jesus said, let and, her alone. And Jesus said what? Let her alone. He telling his disciples, let her alone. He telling Simon, let her alone. Huh? Y'all all ragging down on her? Let her alone. Read. Why trouble ye her? Why trouble ye her? Read. She have wrought, wrought a Watch good work. Watch this now. She have done what? Wrought a good work for She all. have wrought a good work on me. Unsung. One who is not noticed, celebrated, or praised for a work. Let her alone. She has done a good work on me. Watch this, read. For ye have the poor with you so always. So you got the poor with you always. And he's talking to his disciples because they said this could have been spent for, you know, sold and then given to the poor. So you always going to have the poor. I don't care where you go, you're always going to find poor folks. You're always going to have the poor. Read. And whensoever ye will. And whithersoever, what? Ye will, ye may, do, do them good. And you'll have an opportunity to deal with the poor. But me, you have not always. She have done, a verse says, what she could. She is come aforehand to anoint my body to what? To the burying. See, this woman was the woman of the street, so she had money. That's how she was able to acquire this precious oil. Read. Verily I say unto you. Watch this now. Verily I say. Listen to this carefully. This is Memorial Day. I say unto you what? Wheresoever this gospel Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout what? The, the whole, whole world. world. Read. This also that this she has This that she has done shall what? Be spoken of of for a for a memorial of her. I have preached for years. I've heard others preach for years. Not once have I heard any preacher mention this scripture. I have read it for years. But today is Memorial Day weekend. And what 
Mary Magdalene, the sister of Lazarus, did on, am I right, Sister Marsh? There's writings that they are related to Lazarus. Check your writing. I studied this before I speak, that she has something to do with Lazarus. Mary. What's her name? And you find that today we remember what she did as spiritual individuals on this day, this woman is being memorialized. Read that verse again, brother. Verily I say unto you. Verily I say unto you what? Wheresoever this gospel, wheresoever shall, this gospel shall be preached throughout what? The, the whole, whole world. world. This also that she had done shall be spoken of for a what? Memorial of her. Thank God that she was bold enough, despite all of her sins, to anoint Jesus for the burial. In conclusion, back in the St. Luke 7 chapter, Forty-eight. Jesus did what? And he said unto her. And he said unto the woman, read. Thy sins are forgiven. Thy sins are forgiven you. Read. And they, and they that sat. At and they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, What? Thy faith, thy faith not another's faith, but thy faith. Have done what? Save thee. Has saved thee. Read. Go in peace. Go in peace. And do what? Period. Go in peace. Regardless of what this one might have to say, regardless of what that one might have to say, you go in peace. You have done a good work. And you shall be memorialized wherever this gospel of the kingdom is preached. Amen? You believe you heard the truth today? The Lord said you shall know the truth and the truth shall work. Make you free, free from what? Whatever's holding you, whatever's holding you captive against your will. Satan loves to hold you captive, but today you can be set free. Leave her alone. Amen. She had wrought the good work on me. And he turned to the woman and says, Thy sins be forgiven you. Go in peace. Amen. Your faith, not somebody else's faith, but your faith, have saved thee. Go in peace. Amen. May God bless you. Heaven ever smile upon you. Let us continue to hold on, hold out. Look up, but don't give up. Remembering today, the cost of freedom. Amen. The cost of freedom. Jesus paid it all. Amen? Amen. Amen. May God bless you. Heaven will smile upon you. <clears throat> Turn the service back over to Brother Matt. Thank you.